you want to hit your best balls in 2023, you got to fix these five most common mistakes that I see club players make. Let's jump right in. Let's get started with the most common thing we're getting called out on at club level. Don't swing. And whereas that is absolutely right, it's not the whole truth because there are actually volleys where you can swing. When we are saying don't swing, those are usually balls that are coming a little harder and lower at us. So if you're taking the racket back then and somebody's flaming the ball at you, of course you're going to hit it late. But if it's a higher and slower ball, you can absolutely swing a little bit. You just have to make sure that as you're moving through, you keep your legs under your upper body. Otherwise, you're just leaning over the ball. And we definitely don't want to do that. So how far do I want to take it back? Well, on higher, slower balls, you can absolutely take a swing because you have more time to still bring your racket forward and make good contact. But rule of thumb, the lower and harder, the shorter and sweeter you have to keep the swing. When you're setting up for your volley, make sure that the tip of the racket faces to the outside. A lot of players come up to the volleys like that and literally sometimes that. So right from the get-go, you want to work on the tip of the racket pointing to the side and you want to lead with the edge of the racket, the lower edge of the racket leads because this way you can now manipulate the degree with which the racket face is open. And you do need to open it a little bit more when you have lower volleys and you can absolutely close it a little bit when the balls are higher and you're closer up to net because that's the whole point of volleys. You can hit down on those balls, you can open angles. But of course, if your tip of the racket is up there, you're pointing up to the sky, you can't really get under the ball that way. The wrong footwork or no footwork, either one is not good. Because a lot of times, let's be honest, in lessons we're hitting the ball right to the player and they're getting there with one step. And then we're also as coaches using another cue that I find really, really misleading and or confusing. We're saying use a cross step. And what ends up then is that players use one big step and they're pulled sideways when they really want to put the ball over the net in front of them. Of course, there's instances when you're being stretched out wide, that's when you have to move laterally. But ideally, what you want to do is moving up to the ball and not just take one step. Take one step with the outside leg, and I'll explain what the outside leg is in a second, and then stride forward from your outside leg so that you're moving forward. And I'm going to show you a really great drill that I saw Rancha Sanchez Vicario do the other week where she's moving forward all the time. The outside leg is the leg that is behind the side that you're going to hit the ball on. So if I'm a right-hander, I'm hitting a forehand volley, it's my right leg, and the left leg on the backhand because I'm hitting that ball to the left of my body. So instead of just doing this cross step, or this cross step, what I do want to do is I got my split step and then I set my outside foot behind the ball and then I stride forward. That is how I get pop on the ball. Not by swinging, not by doing all kind of other fancy stuff. Here, one, two. So your rhythm on the volley should not be split step. It should be hop, one, two. The hop, one, two, of course, is all great when the ball's coming to you, directly to you. But what do you do if you actually have to move a lot more after your split step to the ball? What you want to do then is split, move, 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 one, two. So that you're always having a wider step with your outside leg to the ball, behind the ball, and then you drive forward from that back leg, outside leg. You knew it. You didn't think, really, that I would do a volley video without talking about the grip. You have to have the proper grip, the continental grip. And I've seen videos now talking about having an Eastern forehand grip and then switching to a backhand Eastern grip. I'm gonna go with no on that. I'm gonna go with a big fat no on that because 
Most claw players that I know struggle with the regular grip. So why give them two grips? So the continental grip is your best friend when it comes to volume. Here's how you find it. Underside of your index finger and the meaty part of the palm. Look at the butt of your grip. You have bevel number one. As a right-hander, you slide one to the right. And both of those checkpoints need to be on that bevel number two. If you're hitting forehand volleys with a forehand grip, you might get away with that. But here's where that's gonna limit you big time. This. On the backhand, I see so many players do this then. And you're not getting anything on it. It really hurts your wrist at some point and you absolutely lose control over the volley. Might pop up, might go in the net, nobody knows where it's going. So your continental grip is your best friend. Start really simple by choking up on the grip because you have a lot more control when you have the racket face closer to your body. So just simply shadow that first and make sure that you set your upper body so you can stride forward with the proper footwork towards your target. And let's get rid of this. Another coaching cue that I find you know, looks difficult to deal with is high to low on the volley. Yes, you do have a somewhat down motion on the volley, but you're certainly not chopping down like a karate chop. That's not what you want to do because you're not getting anything on the ball. The racket face is open, the ball pops up and yeah, nothing good will come of that. So you want to set up behind the ball. And yes, I do like the word punch because you're rarely ever punching down or up. You punch straight forward and that's what you do. You extend your elbow forward and that is how you get pop on the ball. And it also, of course, totally depends on what kind of ball you're getting. Of course, if you have a higher ball and you're closer to the net, you can hit down on the ball. However, you're still not wanting to chop down on the ball because you give it too much rotation and it's not gonna go anywhere. You wanna make sure that you're really penetrating through the court. And many times when you see a low volley, there actually is an upward motion because you have to lift the ball. So you wanna be really careful of what kind of ball you're getting and you have to adjust accordingly. So we got some work to do to hit our best volleys in 2023. Check out this video here, grab a partner, get out on the practice courts for your volleys.